So, how are you holding up? Because I'm a potato. I've got a surprise for you after this next test. Not a fake, tragic surprise like last time. A real surprise. And real confetti this time. Cyberpunk is filled to the brim with weapons. From guns, swords, and even cyberware that puts weapons inside you. What if you wanted to use one unique weapon? One that had quips of his own? Can you beat Cyberpunk 2077 with only Skippy? For those of you that don't know, Skippy is a unique smart pistol that has a crazy AI inside of it. And also a quest tied to it. But before we can talk about Skippy, we need to talk about getting to Skippy. So to start, I choose the Corporal Life Path for no real reason. Try to make Katniss from Hunger Games before giving up and trying to make Denzel Washington. Before settling with a very terrible Ryan Reynolds. My build consists of high intelligence, technical ability, and cool. Cool and intelligence for pistol and smart weapon perks. And tech ability for cyberware perks. I then give myself a look in the mirror. My boss tells me to kill his boss. Take a ride next door, Taylor Swift style. Find myself in the quietest club ever. It is quiet. Hey. Get fired from trying to cook up some Abernathy and get pulled straight into a cutscene. And already we start with a small issue. Since I don't spawn with Skippy and we need to kill these scavs, I know what I need to do. Run in and let Jackie take care of all my problems. Since I'm not Jackie and Jackie isn't doing the challenge, I see no problem with him killing every scav single-handedly. While Jackie can't die in this scene, he does love doing the Family Guy death pose every four seconds. And after I join him, me and Jackie get a good strategy down. I run around and distract all the scavs in the area, and Jackie rips and tears through everything all by himself. We see the outcome of every pick me girl, get paid for saving her, get jumped, and it seems ignoring the people that jump us causes them to be part of an Instagram reel. After waking up, I feel like I'm missing one funny gun in my life. I start my adventure by ignoring Jackie. I'm sorry, Jackster. I run, totally don't steal a car, but it turns out the city's on lockdown. So I go back to Jackie, get fixed up by Vic, hear the amazing city ambiance. Well then, I talk to Golden Flaps and get our job, but first I try to break out of the city and fail. But thanks to a little research, link in the description, I learned there is a way to break out from Watson early. But essentially, you follow this path, and once this error on your screen goes away, I'm free. So I quickly rush over to grab my precious little Skippy. Usually when you pick Skippy up, he speaks to you and starts his quest, but I'm assuming since I'm still in Act 1 and his quest is only a part of Act 2, he doesn't start the conversation. But instead of worrying about it, I continue on with the heist. It's actually kind of cool that you can see Judy slightly before your first encounter. But Easter eggs aside, Evelyn tells me she's got info on this chip she's looking for and wants me to take a gander. But once she explains it to her friend Judy, I'm much less thrilled. V needs to get deep inside. Why well, you gotta say it like that? For what? For what purpose? My homie daps me up with his words. You we find the chip's location, and I quickly head home to grab all my belongings and sell them to get cyberware that's needed to get the smart weapons to actually work. I show off my great driving skills, skip the call with Meredith, meet up with Jackie, have a deep conversation. Either you fuck others, or you get fucked. Sounds like my kind of world. <laughs> Decide to follow along with Jackie's idea and just go guns a blazing. We easily rip down the mills from guards, find the spider bot, decide to save Brick, and take on the psycho at the end. With Skippy, it isn't too hard, just take pot shots whenever I can. Because Skippy's a smart weapon, it aims for me, so that's not much of a problem. After it's all said and done, Golden Cheeks gives me a compliment. You got some balls. <laughs> Thanks. Most people don't talk about him, so. Thanks, man. I get hit with the hardest insult on the way to the afterlife. You stink of junk food. <laughs> Damn, come on, man. Get the gang together for the heist. Don't say anything to have a very peaceful ride with Jackie. Woo, feeling good. So far, this hasn't been too difficult. I wonder how. Almost forgot, no iron. Well, that's an issue. I decide to ignore it and enjoy our new digs, let the spider show off its DIY makeup tutorial, grab the chip, watch what happens when a parent gives their four-year-old an iPad, me and Jack to reenact the best scene from Shrek. Jackie. Yep. High. 
V. I'm looking down and encounter the next problem for the run. To use the elevator, I need this guard to be not alive. And with multiple targets, Jackie gets a little distracted on who to shoot. But after a few tries, I get a golden run, grab the token, find the scary Adam Smasher guy. Oh, fuck you shit, dude. It's Adam Smasher. Oh, no, dude. And once again, if on cue, another issue with the run. Another one of these chase scenes. And unlike the last one, if I choose not to shoot, I double check to make sure it wasn't from low health. Because I'm forced to shoot down these drones and I have no way to have Skippy in this chase scene, I'm forced to fail the challenge. It's a lame way to fail the challenge to something akin to a cutscene, but it would be more lame to give up now, so despite the fact that I've failed the challenge, I keep moving forward. Jackie also fails his living challenge, and when I tell Golden Cheeks about it, he thinks I should fail that challenge as well. But with my death, I'm at least reminded I'm playing the right game, and I wake up as not V and tear down Arasaka. Well, it doesn't matter now, I was going to say silver hand cutscenes don't count, but since the challenge has already failed, it doesn't really matter. I rip down the tower like it's 2023 and get rewarded with my soul privileges taken away. I wake up in a junkyard, see what happens to a Burger King employee when someone gives them 10 Whoppers instead of 5 Whoppers and 5 more Whoppers, and once again get forced to fail the challenge because if I don't shoot Takamura's enemies, the car gets hit with a red shell, so I instead shoot his enemies and become part of an Instagram reel. Get dragged to Vix to get told death is upon me, get shown at my home that Johnny Silverhand is literally me. And once I leave the home, Skippy finally activates. I grab a quick thumbnail and get asked which mode to put him in. Stone Cold Killer, which only lands headshots, or Puppy Loving Pacifist, which only does leg shots. To confuse people, I choose Puppy Loving Pacifist, ignore Takamura, listen to Johnny Boy, find someone existing incorrectly. I'm fun there, man. Hey, pal. You just blow in from stupid town? And now I'll tell you how Skippy's quest actually works. Usually, if you choose Stone Cold Killer, you get 50 kills, and he'll ask you why you want this mode. But after your answer, he switches over to Puppy Loving Pacifist. However, if you start with Puppy Loving Pacifist, incapacitate 50 opponents, he will lock himself into Stone Cold Killer. While I go on a no-burner spree, get chrome and more drip than a sink in Flint, Michigan, and finally Skippy decides it's time to become epic. I tell him to not talk to me and he switches modes, and me and V have a very different reaction. No, 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 wait! Oh no, I'm going to exclusively get headshots. Oh no, this is such a travesty. I didn't want that to happen at all. Oh, golly gee. What a terrible day I'm having. I see someone hitting the yoinkity sploinkity, ask Judy where I can find Evelyn, make my way to clouds, and run into another small issue. Since I can't kill the guard and get the key to pass this barrier, and Skippy has been stolen away from me temporarily, I can't get to Woodman in a peaceful state. I decide to load a save and ignore this problem for now, get into a quick car crash. Johnny, see what happened? Something feels off here. You don't say. Get some bad memories. Ask Rogue where I can find this Hellman guy, pay her to get the info, and while I wait I go to Jackie's funeral, mostly to get his bike. I also deliver a quick package, kill anyone who tries to take him away from me, and get rewarded with a weapon I can't use. Rogue tells me Hellman's location, and someone who can help me. I call up Pan Am and almost throw up, grind some XP on my way over to her, agree to help her, but ignore her for some quick ammo. Pan Am friends don't want to help, so we go solo. Set up a sneaky ambush, but I go guns a-blazing anyway. Pan Am ropes me into helping her more and asks a really dumb question. Are you ready? Are you ready? Like, what else are we gonna... What, what, it's not like you're gonna let me out of the car and just sit here forever. Yes, I'm ready. And taking down her enemies is a piece of cake. Once we finish, we head to the bar and me and the server share a moment. <laughs> just a man moment right there. I was like, yep. Mm-hmm. And thanks to Pan Am, I'm forced to once again not use Skippy. Thanks, Pan Am. Even the encounter where I use the turret is weird, as I don't die, but also don't progress. It's stupid. I tear down the drones, overload the MP, lie to Pan Am. What? It's quiet. It's the home of the city. 
It's not quiet. All I hear is freaking technological noises. Accidentally reload a save. Make train go boom. Pan Am fails the don't get shot challenge. I fail the actual challenge. Pan Am wants to help, but I say no. -uh. I instantly regret not taking your help, but after a second try, do it with ease. We have a normal American conversation, and we track Hellman down to a gas station. Skippy makes us a breeze as one-in-one -one encounters are easy when I hit every headshot available. I help Hellman take a nap, get a free bike that I never use, wake Hellman back up, talk so long the sun sets. Johnny gets a little jealous, so we have our own talk. He explains the pros about harming Arasaka. He thanks me for listening to his presentation, and I head straight back to class. But just kidding, EXP is a little bit more important. I change around some implants and try to see if I can cheese my way into clouds. While I can make it over, I can't get in. And while I would be able to drop a weapon, because Skippy is part of a quest, I can't drop him. I instead find a way to sneak over to Hellman, teabag my way through a conversation, break into Hellman's office, where he is somehow chill, he gives me the info I need, and Johnny talks my ear off once again. But sometimes, he just makes sense. Arasaka bad. Yeah. I get asked if I'm a prostitute, finally say no. Judy becomes the best actor I've ever seen. <laughs> the nice medic man compliments my lips, and I tell Judy to be nicer to him. Just look how nice he is. I like you. You're frisky. Intrepid. Aw, oh, stop. I, I fail my charisma check. You come over here and, uh, yeah, uh, 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 I'll, I'll come back. With the new information, we track where everyone is. I sneak my way into the facility with no casualties. Skippy likes it when I put a magazine in him, which makes me uncomfortable. We find Evelyn. I share a smoke with Johnny and use Evelyn's spare DD. DDs. Yep, we use her BD. <laughs> we use them DDs. And use Evelyn's spare BDs for extra information. I'm forced to wait for the next quest, and I spend the spare time to get some implants. I get this hand implant that lets Skippy do a burst of damage. At first, I didn't know if I was allowed to use it, but it says the damage is done by the gun's shots, so it seems fine to me. I then head to the chapel, get forced to do Placide's job, which I was going to do silently. But it actually harms me doing this bank robber style because I can only carry 999 bullets at a time and these meatheads take a lot of shots to finish off. I actually run into the Lizzo boss room, die, and more prepared, run back in. This boss fight likes to heal and the only way to stop it is to attack her with back shots. However, I'm super low on ammo heading into this fight, and when I run out, all I can do is the Skippy Slap. After a few attempts, I get a run where I get her low enough with HP that the Skippy Slaps get the rest of the HP out of her. I get the info Placid needs, take a quick nap, and Johnny tells me to wake up Samurai. I make my way to Evelyn's boss, get to explore the amazing net. This is it? Seriously? For some reason, go back in time to watch Johnny's pass, where his girlfriend takes it from behind, he takes it from behind, watches his girlfriend die, but she doesn't really die. Johnny's robo-wife says she can save me as long as I link her into Arasaka Tower. And so once I become drippy in two ways, I actually find out for the first time you can kill the voodoo boys. But that would be a bad idea. I have so little ammo. Damn it. I'm dead, I'm dead, I'm dead, I'm dead, I'm dead, I'm dead, I'm dead. After dealing with my terrible life choices, I slowly tear my way through these netrunners, but as it turns out, I need to fight Placide at the end. With my low ammo, it's going to be a rough fight, having to... Why, why is this actually kind of working? What in the hell? Why? I'm actually, I'm actually getting him. Yep, that was a, that was a really tough boss fight. Afterwards, I go to Takamura, but before I wait, Skippy tries to further his quest line. I lie to him and tell him I'll bring him to his owner. Ha <laughs> ha, you're not going anywhere, little guy. Takamura yaps to me, his friend yaps to me, and once we're told no that he can't help, we instead get information from a fixer. Takamura tries to convince me that that isn't a cat, but I'm not stupid. That's a cat. Takamura does a quick trauma dump. I sense that you judge me, and yet you have no right to. Unlike you and your friend, Mr. Wells, I was not arrogant. I did not take the easy path. I'm told to sneak to the parade float, but we both know I don't do that. Skippy forgets why he shoots, and for some reason, I'm just able to run to the float in combat and hack it. I run for my life and somehow get a compliment. Excellent work, B. 
Was that excellent work? I just kind of ran in there, did nothing, and ran back out. This compliment gives me the confidence to ask Takamura out to dinner, and he rejects me. It's okay. I'm fine. It's whatever. I then meet back up with Smoke and Judy, and she shows off how smart she is. Talking with my girls like a game of 3D chess. Don't let her derail you. Isn't... Isn't all chess 3D? I'm brought along to watch Judy get rejected and get revenge for Evelyn. She didn't feel better. I meet back up with Takamura, and we get ready for his little plan. I meant to take this slow and sneaky. I don't have to explain that I don't take this slow and sneaky. I figure out I can craft ammo, so that's neat. And I move into the boss fight with Odo, which is surprisingly very easy. Being able to stun him out of his moves, and with my double jump implants, I can dodge him with ease. And because every gun has a quick melee, I'm able to smack him out of his healing state and unload into his face. I kill Oda. Takamura said he'll remember this. I doubt it. Takamura shows me his hobby, then makes me remind Hanako of her trauma. As punishment, her guards blow us up. I wake up from my little flashbang nap and escape by myself. I would have saved Takamura, but he reject my dinner invite. I'm not petty, you're petty. Hanako says she wants to work with me after just saying she didn't want to. I go back down for another nap, but once I wake up, Johnny took me to a little getaway. I tell him I own one. So after getting some implants, I let Johnny take my body for a spin. He gets some fresh ink, and for some reason didn't tell this lady to zip up, becomes literally me as he almost vomits after getting too close to a woman, and I wake up very peacefully, until I see Rogue. She said she wants to help me and Johnny, I show off my skills with the ladies. You, you got a little something in between your teeth, you know, yeah, yeah you, it's fine. Catch Johnny popping out of existence. Haha, -ha, I caught you. Judy calls me for some help. On my way to her place, I show off my sick driving skills. Sup, girl? I do <laughs> And despite how much I want to help Judy to continue her quest, I need to punch this guy. And since my fists aren't skippy, I can't. So I instead try and get whatever help Rogue can offer. We sneak over to a ship that I'm told belongs to Adam Smasher. And while I'm distracted, Rogue takes down the only man on the ship. The bond I've formed with Skippy over this adventure makes me feel bad for Johnny's gun, so I quickly take it back for Johnny. The only info we get is where Johnny's body is. Johnny's sad to see nothing left to honor him, so I leave him a little something. Johnny wants one more favor from me, as he wants to get a date with Rogue. I unfortunately accept and get these wild geezers together for a movie. I watch Johnny get rejected. He's literally me! And says his new last request is to get his band back together to play one more time. It was rather easy to do, break into his friend's house, play the second best song in cyberpunk, convince his boner friend to host a gig, save his other friend from Maelstrom. I have V share my feelings. His job. Sometimes it's hurry up and wait. Damn, I was just... I was just thinking about that being an issue. Damn. Thanks for also voicing that complaint, V. And finally get to play on stage. After fulfilling Johnny's wishes, I talk to Hanako. Excellent. You have come. Yes, I have. Come. Show the side effects of dinner without YouTube and make a mistake of getting in an elevator. Forgetting elevators kill people. I take a quick nap, make it to Vic safe thanks to my guardian angel. I get the Detroit starter pack. And Johnny tells me I have two options before going, wait, wait, wait. I have a third option and telling me we can just storm the tower ourselves. No planes, just me and him. 25 minute adventure. I take him up on his offer, try and party like it's 2023, and get my butt cheeks torn apart, reattached, and ripped off once again. Holy shit. You gotta be fucking kidding me. Whoa. Send assistance, please. The main way to take on this tower is cheese. It somehow gets easier the further you get in, except my max health keeps slowly dropping. After dealing with people bots and actual bots, holy fucking bots, this must be Fortnite current day, it's just robots. I open Makoshi for Cunningham and get to be Flint Lockwood for just a moment. You'd think the Smasher fight would be difficult. Oh, wah. I died from fall damage. I'm going to bed, but it really wasn't. Thanks to my low max HP, I can easily heal back any damage with ease. Even ammo wasn't an issue in this fight, as additional handgun ammo spawns in the boss arena. So with a bit of joy, 
<laughs> and a bullet sent from Johnny Silverhand, I kill Adam Sandler and load into Makoshi. Cunningham tells me I did a great job, but still get the reward of death. Johnny was upset. I get a solid six months left to live and decided to go to the good place beyond the clouds, the Space Casino. And on my way to spend my child's college fund, I prove with ease that no, you can't be Cyberpunk 2077 with only Skippy. I want to thank you guys for watching and thank everyone for the support on the last video. This style of content is a blast to make, so I'm glad everyone seems to be enjoying it as much as I enjoy making it. I'm going to keep trying to improve and add on to this style, so to do so, the next challenge run's not going to be in Cyberpunk, but to everyone who heavily enjoys the Cyberpunk content, I'm just taking a small break as I don't want to burn out too quickly. So, as I still don't have an outro line yet, have a day. A good day.